Amazon's Jack Ryan is the CIA's newest entertainment propaganda vehicle. John Krasinski went to CIA headquarters to help prepare him for the role. Well, what's cool about this is you you really did your homework. You went to the CIA. You saw oh, yeah. the people who yeah. you were going to be dealing with. Um, there's you right there in the middle of it. Yeah. So what did you learn from there when you were there? It was amazing. It was probably one of the reasons I was so excited to do the part. I'm yeah. such a nerd for spy stuff, so I was so excited to go there. I, I have to admit, I thought it was going to be the most boring conversation yeah. of all time because I thought every question I had, they'd say, we're not allowed to talk about that. <laughs> and instead, they were the most giving, generous, unbelievable people, not only about their work uh, in and out of the field, but also at home and how they are with their families and what it's like to be in the CIA and have kids and things like that, which was really moving. But Jack Ryan is simply the latest example of the long-term relationship between Tom Clancy Productions and the US government. Clancy himself was friendly with the US military and intelligence agencies and following the success of his debut novel, The Hunt for Red October, he was invited to speak at the CIA, FBI, and NSA, and went on tours of military bases. In, in the research for Red Storm, uh, I got down to watch a, uh, an Air Force fighter, uh, fighter squadron go through its paces with a scramble and everything. The Navy let me spend, uh, spend a week on USS Gallery, FFG-26, a, uh, a, an FFG-7 uh, Perry-class frigate. That was an awful lot of fun. Long time between beers, though. Uh, the Army uh, let me go up to Aberdeen, drive and fire an M1 tank. Oh, uh, where's the state trooper when you really want one? <laughs> Clancy even sent a copy of the manuscript for the Cardinal of the Kremlin to the agency's Office of Public Affairs. Letters obtained from the CIA show that he asked them to review the book for security considerations and admitted he had deliberately portrayed CIA operations in an unrealistic way. Clancy also said that his publisher was not aware of him doing this and asked the CIA to keep it hush-hush. When it came to the movie adaptations, the first four films were all supported by the Pentagon in return for the scripts being rewritten to fit the military's agenda. In Hunt for Red October, this meant making changes to Sean Connery's backstory and the reasons for his defection, including the Soviets' distrust of Lithuanians. Patriot Games was also supported by the CIA, who allowed the filmmakers to shoot at their headquarters in Virginia because they felt the film would portray them positively. While the CIA offered no support to clear and present danger, military files show that they were involved in the months of script negotiations between the producers and the Pentagon. They also sent CIA officers to a preview screening at the Kennedy Center. Both the Pentagon and CIA supported The Sum of All Fears, with CIA Hollywood liaison Chase Brandon working as an on-set advisor, and real-life Marines appearing in the helicopter rescue scene. The only Jack Ryan film that wasn't supported by the US government was Shadow Recruit, which was rejected by both the FBI and CIA. However, the CIA did meet with the developers of the game Ghost Recon Wildlands and asked that they avoid stereotypes of female CIA officers when sketching out their characters. The game, much like the film Clear and Present Danger, centers on black operations against a South American drug cartel. But it emerges that the bombing of a US embassy that provoked the operations was a false flag carried out by a deep cover DEA agent. You have no idea what is really going on. I can give you the truth about Sandoval. Enough bullshit. I have evidence, an audio recording of Ricky Sandoval confessing his greatest sin. Then you will see that your whole mission, your entire reason for being here, is based on a lie.
when it came to Amazon's Jack Ryan, the Pentagon rejected the producer's requests for assistance. Phil Strubb reviewed the initial scripts and felt it was very well written, but hopeless for DoD. This is probably because the opening episodes show the US military defending a CIA black site where they torture terror suspects, paying local jihadis in Yemen for the dead bodies of victims of drone strikes. Okay, Monty Hall. Let's make a deal. And a traumatized drone pilot gambling and cavorting with a married couple in Las Vegas. But the Coast Guard, part of the Department of Homeland Security, did support the series. I did ride with the US Coast Guard, so that was pretty amazing. Um, there's a scene where the uh, US Coast Guard picks Jack Ryan up, and uh, I sort of thought that we might shoot that I get in the helicopter, but I thought I'd get on and I'd get off. No. They took <laughs> off, and they took off real fast. <laughs> They threw the microphone on my head, and you heard the like, this is really weird, this is fun, cool, cool. What's happening? And then, uh, yeah, we flew around in the US Coast Guard for a long time as a helicopter, which, being with those guys, and actually just, I, I gotta say, I actually took a, you know, I took a selfie video and sent it to my brother, and I was like, what are you doing today? <laughs> just a regular Saturday for me. <laughs> You know, and, and this is kind of the wonderful experience of movies and the kind of the, the, the meta levels of this. So that was actually, that's the scene which is later in the pilot was based on a real life thing that happened to me. My, my brother-in-law was the uh, former Secretary of Transportation who, in the Clinton administration, um, his name was Federico Pena, and he was, we were on vacation in the Outer Banks of North Carolina, and he was called to an emergency cabinet meeting in Washington. And he was like, well, I can't go, I'm in the Outer Banks of North Carolina, and they're like, no problem, we'll come get you. And like a little while later, this giant Coast Guard helicopter comes in and picked us and, and picked him up and took him off to Washington, D.C. And then at the end of the day, brought him back. And I'm like, what was that all about? And he's like, I can't tell you. The CIA distanced themselves from the show with a credit at the end of each episode saying they did not endorse its content. But they allowed the creators and stars to visit CIA headquarters, and ultimately granted them permission to film there. Ryan is seen arriving, going through the doors, and walking over the CIA seal, exactly the same as in Patriot Games, Argo, and other CIA-supported productions. The CIA's full cooperation helped add to the show's authenticity, but it also turned it into a piece of PR for the agency, resulting in Krasinski and others extolling the virtues of the CIA in numerous interviews. When you meet the real people and you hang out with them and you spend a lot of time with them, you realize that the dedication is really in the work. It's got to be a foolproof case that you present before you move forward down the line on any sort of action taken. The coolest thing ever for me, I mean, I totally nerded out when we got to the CIA. I, I think I probably embarrassed myself and I'm sure they have it on tape. So, um, uh, no, it was it was unbelievable to me. I thought it would be the most uneventful research time of my life because I thought the answer to everything would be we can't, we can't discuss anything. And instead, they were the most unbelievably generous, kind, smart people. And more than just learning about their life in the field, I got to hear about you know how it weighs upon a marriage, how it weighs upon families. How do you, how do you keep going as a as a person, not only an, uh, 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 an officer? So. I, I owe them everything, I really do. The CIA is something that we should all not only cherish, but be saying thank you every single day. I'm asking for you, has, and we'll start with Graham and, and work our way down for this, but has being a part of the show changed the way you see the world in, in any meaningful way, other than you know carrying a lot of Purell on airplanes? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, I think in the, in the process of going to the CIA, which was amazing, and to John's point, seeing the people that actually work there and seeing uh, the devotion that they have was really uh, a special eye-opening experience. And then just through the research of kind of getting to the root causes of some of the Islamic fundamentalism, uh, I think was very eye-opening for me as well. Um, their job is that they're always trying to do the right thing. There are things that they may feel 
um, they don't want to do or feel is, is not moral to them, so they will not do that certain aspect of the mission. There's always a different way to find out the information you're trying to get. And I just, again, I, I was so uh, relieved and sort of honored to be there among a, a group of people who are so dedicated to the, to the rest of us. Despite the military refusing to provide production support to the first season of Jack Ryan, they did help promote it. The first season premiere was a USO event, hosted on a retired Navy battleship and attended by military personnel. The screening of the first episode also kicked off LA's Fleet Week to celebrate the military sea services. Also joining the stars on board, hundreds of service members from the Navy, Marine Corps and Coast Guard. This premieres for them, and so they've been thanking us all day, but we really want to thank them. To do it in particular here at uh, a USO event, for me, I have to be honest and say it's one of the reasons why I took the role. One of the reasons why I took the role is to continue my relationship with the military community and to be here with these people. The big irony is they kept saying thank you to me, and the truth is I had to say thank you to them, not only for their service, but by having me here today. When this part came around, I thought this is an opportunity for me to stay in this community, represent other men and women who put their lives on the line every single day. Thank you for each and every one of your commitments. This show is for you, this night is for you, to partner with the USO is truly one of the greatest honors of my career. So thank you all so much for coming tonight, and I hope you enjoy the show. While Carlton Cuse claims that the show is apolitical, he also admitted that their aim was to glamorize the people working for the CIA and the Pentagon. Why is now a good time for Jack Ryan? I mean, we started working on this thing three and a half years ago, but the timing couldn't have been more perfect. Um, the, uh, the idea of a show that celebrates the competence and professionalism of members of our intelligence community and military feels like exactly the right show at this moment to be out there. Um, you know, regardless of what your politics are, I think everybody can get behind that as an idea. And I think it's an important idea. I think that um, it's, uh, you know, with denigration of the intelligence and military comes this idea that they're not important when in fact they are really important in terms of, you know, keeping us safe and, you know, protecting the values that we all, you know, want to have as, as a people and as a country. The show is a piece of PR for the CIA, but it goes much further than that. The first season continues in the tradition of other CIA-sponsored TV shows, like 24 and Homeland. In perpetuating the myth of a highly sophisticated, technologically advanced terror threat, the story centers around a former ISIS member who carries out a string of extremely well-planned and deadly terrorist attacks, and how Jack Ryan and Jim Greer stop him. We see our protagonist evolve from a nerdy guy who uses his CIA computer to stalk women via the internet into a crack field agent who kills terrorists, rescues refugees, and mansplains the correct terms for CIA employees. I mean, how is this supposed to work? You're a spy, you're a CIA agent. Officer. We say officer. The movies get that wrong all the time. <laughs> um. Hughes claimed that the show didn't demonize Muslims, because they show a variety of Muslim characters, including Ryan's boss, Greer. Carlton and John, do you guys have any, has it changed the way you see the world? You know, I would say that being in uh, Morocco was an incredible experience. I mean, I think that there is a, there's an unnecessary amount of demonization of Islamic culture in general. We've tried in this show to not just have a bad guy who is a terrorist, but we try, we have a variety of, of, of of Muslim characters um, across the spectrum and, and some very heroic characters and it was wonderful to be in this country and with kind, generous, warm, helpful, talented people who worked on our show, who took care of us, who we met, who invited us into their homes and I feel like that cultural exposure was really, um, was really tremendous. And he's right. They show Muslims being terrorists, unwelcome immigrants in Western Europe, terrorist suspects, the targets of drone strikes, suicide bombers, child molesters, 
suicide truck bomb terrorists, rapist terrorists, and refugees who are married to terrorists, and human traffickers who smuggle the refugees who are married to terrorists. You may recognize Dr. Ryan from this evening's installment of Jihadi Theater. Early on, we learn that Jack is a former Marine who became a CIA analyst, and that his entire unit was killed in a helicopter crash in Afghanistan. In one of the final episodes of Season 1, it is revealed that a small child used a grenade to suicide bomb the helicopter, and we're given no explanation as to why. Even young children are shown to be a threat, as long as they are Muslims with brown skin. Everywhere from Yemen to France to Syria is shown as a hotbed of Islamic terror, while the CIA are portrayed as the noble line of defense against a ruthless and lethal enemy. We, we approach it from a very non-political standpoint, but we kind of leaned into this idea that Clancy had that the people who do these jobs are really critical and that there's this kind of wish fulfillment to this story that like we all hope that there's a Jack Ryan out there who can save us and you know was protecting us from the chaos of the world. As part of the promotion for season two, John Krasinski and Michael Kelly went on a USO tour of European military bases. At a private screening on a US Air Force base in England, attended by military and intelligence personnel, Krasinski let slip how deeply the CIA were involved in the show. A lot of us are married to our own personal Jack Ryan. <laughs> for this? This is an intel spy show. How do you prepare for this to get it so spot on? Can you make a question? I thought so. Can I have my microphone? Please. <laughs> uh, that is a really good question. So, uh, the main reason why I said yes to doing this role, not only is it a huge opportunity for me, obviously, and I love the character, but I actually come from a huge military family. So, I have 11 uh, cousins, aunts, and uncles that have served or are currently serving. So, for me, it was one of those things where if I could do a show that could really interface more with the military, and especially the intelligence community, I would love to do that. So the first question I asked is if I could go down to Langley and really interface with, with Langley and, and the agency and really talk to them about how they would like their character to be perceived as well. So we did a lot of uh, conversations about really making Jack Ryan, as much as it is fun and all that stuff, to actually be as relevant and uh, specific as possible. So we have uh, so many different um, consultants and people who are always uh, uh, checking in with us and we're checking in with them, so obviously it's not perfect uh, representation of it's out there, but we really wanted to take a, a chance and we were talking to some people back there that said it's actually very real for them too, so we got that standard of approval. Um, but yeah, it's really just about asking questions and making sure we're not doing anything that's, you know, too far beyond the pale and really trying to celebrate it. When trailers for the new season were released, this led to criticism from journalists and commentators, including Venezuela's Minister of Culture. Before the show even came out, it was accused of being propaganda for a US coup or war in Venezuela. Jim from The Office is in yet another project about how great the military-industrial complex is, this time in the Amazon show Jack Ryan, based on the books by Tom Clancy, you know, the Michael Bay of airport bookshops. In it, Venezuela doesn't want food, medicine, or a stable economy. It wants a nuke, preferably one of those fancy Russian ones. This led to Krasinski denying that the show is about the political situation in Venezuela, even though social media promotions included fake election adverts for two Venezuelan politicians who feature heavily in season two. Do, do you worry about the political ramifications? I guess when something's so yeah. convincing, they think it might be propaganda. Well, I also think that, to me, it, it, I was actually shooting Quiet Place 2 when, uh, when the trailer dropped, but I did hear that some people were upset, and I think it's based upon a two-minute clip, and I, I hope that when they see the show um, that it's a very different reaction, only because I think that the, 
assumptions that are being made. That I think it was that the U.S. was attacking Venezuela. That has nothing to do with our show whatsoever. It's actually, um, especially my um, uh, storyline. Like I said, a friend of mine who's a senator dies in Venezuela, and I try to find out what happened to him. That's as simple as that gets. The second season of Jack Ryan doubles down on the first, evolving from PR for the war on terror into smart, sophisticated propaganda. It's smart, sophisticated propaganda. The series revolves around a convoluted global conspiracy involving the president of Venezuela, Nicolas Reyes, an obvious substitute for real-life president Nicolas Maduro. Reyes is shown to be a ruthless dictator who kidnaps dissidents, suppresses protesters, and murders his own general because he doesn't trust him. The country is said to be on the verge of collapse, entirely in keeping with US rhetoric on Venezuela. Well, I don't have to tell you, this is not the Venezuela of your youth. Ah, uh, yes, I am well aware. Is there anything good to report? Gas is cheaper than water. Over the last two decades, a socialist dictatorship has wreaked havoc in Venezuela. Government corruption and failed economic policies have destroyed a once thriving nation. The country is literally falling apart. Jack Ryan, Jim Greer, and Mike November set about trying to overthrow Reyes and his corrupt, inhumane regime. This includes helping his political opponent, Gloria Bernalde, win the election. Bernalde is depicted as a left-wing populist, motivated by concerns for the human rights of Venezuelans. My character is Gloria Bernalde. It's an amazing character because she's a family woman uh, and she's not very interested in politics, in politics until her husband was kidnapped. This is a total reversal of the facts on the ground in Venezuela and of the CIA's true role in Central and South America. In reality, the US government's preferred leader of Venezuela, Juan Guaido, is right-wing, a product of international capitalism and economic hitmen. While some of the real-world Venezuelan opposition are socialists, they aren't the ones being supported by the US. Venezuela had succeeded in uh, bringing uh, millions and millions of Venezuelans out of extreme poverty. Nobody cared in the 1980s and 90s that there were millions of Venezuelans dying of hunger and malnutrition. No one cared. It, it, it was a government that was palatable to Washington and a government that was a right-wing government. The moment that a left-wing government came in power, uh, priority number one in Washington was to topple it. Historically speaking, the CIA's role in Latin America has been to fight and overthrow left-wing populist, socialist, or nationalist leaders who resisted the onslaught of the corporate empire, such as Arbenz in Guatemala, Allende in Chile, and the Sandinistas in Nicaragua. The CIA favored leaders like Reyes, military dictators who brutalize opponents and sell out their own countries, like Castillo Armas and Augusto Pinochet. Flipping the script on these facts has the effect of convincing liberals and left-wingers to support not just the US government's intentions in Venezuela, but also the CIA's broader role across the Americas. Season two is just as racist as season one, despite Krasinski trying to put a progressive spin on it. Uh, so, John, I know you have a big staple in the Hispanic history, the culture. Um, are you gonna potentially have a predominant cast of Hispanic uh, people? in the future for like a movie or, or some sort of TV show or something? Uh, the His Hispanic culture is everything. Do we have a lot? This season two actually takes place. We shot in Bogota, Colombia. And so there's a, a whole load, I think probably the majority of our cast is. 
So we already did it. I beat you to the punch. The show portrays Venezuelans as violent protesters, mercenaries, lawyers who arrange assassinations, murderers, arsonists, and corrupt officials kowtowing to an evil dictator, and ordinary people who support an evil dictator. Even young children are shown to be a threat, as long as they are Venezuelans with brown skin. Can you talk generally about the main threat this season without too many spoilers, just like what they're confronting? Um, hmm. <laughs> can we? Can we? Right. <laughs> we can move. I don't know. <laughs> well, you mentioned bad guys. Bad guys. A lot of bad there's guys. Bad guys. There's good guys. And stuff happens. <laughs> bad women. <laughs> yeah. Jack Ryan is a paradox, simultaneously a very up-to-date and relevant series about spies and geopolitics, and a crude, bigoted piece of 1980s-style Hollywood propaganda. The second season continued the show's relationship with the CIA, but this time the DoD got fully on board, loaning the producers the use of a warship and other military vehicles. I saw a nice picture there they put up of you guys with the USO flag in front of you. Yeah. You watched you watch the episodes, the new episodes I heard with the troops? Yeah, yeah, we, we so we, uh, they did it last season as well, and, and we like for the troops to be the first ones to Aww. see the show, so. That is so cool. Yeah, instead of some, you know, um, big Hollywood premiere, we get to go give it to I the men and that. women. I love that, give it to the men and the yeah. women who so deserve we went, it. So we went to London, we went to Ramstein in Germany, and. Neither the Pentagon nor the CIA are credited on the show in an effort to disguise their influence. Part of the, uh, doing the show, obviously you are a, a, you're a CIA yes. in the show, and uh, you got to go to the real deal. Um, how, was your, how was your visit to the CIA? That was incredible. You know, you get to do a lot of cool things as an actor. What we do for a living, we do a lot of really neat things, but to go there as many times as you've seen it on television, as many times as you've seen that emblem in a movie, when you walk up to that building, you're just like, wow. Yeah. And you put, when I put my foot on that stair to go into the building, and I was just like, oh my God, think of all the people who walked up these stairs, you know? And, and then when you stand in front of that emblem, you're just like, wow. And did you, you know? get to, uh, did you sort of get to engage with some of them and talk yeah. to them about yeah, the, I the did part a full, of it? I mean, it was a full day thing. It was all day long. And, uh, and I got to ask all these questions, and many of which I obviously can't repeat yeah. the answers to. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, and it was like that all day. Like, you know, you're asking questions, and they'd be like, yeah. And then, and I'm like, yeah, but then, but then what happened? I can't answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> but their role was significant. Wendell Pierce based his performance of Greer on someone he met at CIA headquarters. Then actually, I was thinking of the guy who actually met at the CIA. Okay. Who, um, you know, do research that way. I just noticed how he came in the room and, and he clocked. He was, he's a student of human behavior. And, um, and he came into a conference room and he just, and he didn't say much. Just clocked it on after we had the meeting, I was introduced to him, and I was able to walk and talk with him and get to know him and start to pick his brain. And he went through the entire room. He said, I walked in, I know that was your producer. Uh, and he was not the main producer because he was doing all the talking. The guy to the left of him was, uh, he's your showrunner, right? And I mean, he just went down and I said, wow. And he said, that's what I'm supposed to do. That's, that's a part of being an officer. And I said, wow. He said, you're a student of human behavior. Wow. And, so, and that helped me as an actor. Yeah. How did that help you as an actor? I guess that's what an actor is. A, a, a student of human behavior. The US government had a profound impact on Jack Ryan, influencing its content, just as they did for previous Tom Clancy productions. This is government propaganda, conducted in secret, without the audience knowing. Their aim is to shape and manipulate how you see the world. All the geopolitical things that are going on in the world, Jack Ryan's sort of a great geopolitical figure to get in the middle of it and sort of lead you through these things you might be reading about in the newspaper. And how am I supposed to know what's real and what's bullshit with you? So, regardless of whether you enjoy Jack Ryan, 
regardless of whether you like the series or not. Do not buy into its paranoid, bigoted, state-sponsored, militarized mindfuck of a worldview.